Hello everyone, this is Scorpa, and we're gonna take a closer look at the new DLC for Total War Rome 2, the Pirates and Raiders Culture Pack, which has been released on the 29th of May. So the Pirates and Raiders Culture Pack brings you three new playable factions, and I'm probably gonna butcher all three names, but here we go. So the new factions are the Adria, the Thracian Tribes of Tillis, and the Odrysian Kingdom. All these factions gain the following Balkan culture traits. The promise of loot, which gives a decrease of 50% in mercenary rec recruitment costs, while spending 50% more upkeep for mercenaries units with the rapid campaigns trait. So let's take a look at the new factions. I'm gonna start with the one uh, which has the hardest name, the Ardea. Your people make their living from the sea, and it is by sea that your power will spread. You have prospered by exacting tolls from the vessels of others, but this has earned you enemies. The Dalmate to the north are hostile to your raids upon their shipping. Should your struggle with them erupt into war, you may find an ally in the Daorsi, who are no allies of the Dalmate. Across the sea lies Rome and the Etruscan League. They will not stand by whilst your influence in the Adriatic grows unchecked. So prepare for war. To the south, the archaic powers in Greece squabble relentlessly with one another. In time, your power will eclipse them all. The sea will lend the RDI access to every corner of the world. All shall know your power. The RDA have the highest rating bonus income and gain an additional recruitment slot in all ports, while neglecting their lands for a decrease in wealth generation from agricultural buildings. The Adria start at an interesting starting position between several great factions like the Greek states and Rome. This allows them to make some interesting choices early on and to have massive raiding possibilities. You just have to make sure you keep a strong navy to repel enemy enemy fleets. And once a garrison leaves the city, attack and raid it. With the gold gained from raiding you can build up your land forces and expand either north or south. Uh, and for the brave players you can even take on Rome early on. The choice is yours. So while all the factions of the Balkan culture employs the core barbarian units, the Adria gains the following new units. These are the Illyrian Marines, which are highly trained medium armored spear infantry. The Illyrian Raiders, which are fast moving axe wielding stealth infantry. The Illyrian Noble Hoplites, which are well drilled, very heavily armored infantry. And a few new ships, which are the Raiding Amolia, which are fast boarding crafts manned by Illyrian raiders. The Assault Hexares, which is a huge assault barge manned by Illyrian raiders. The Assault Tetras, which is a large assault barge manned by Illyrian raiders. At least that's what the wiki stated, but both the Assault Hexares and the Assault Tatares are both manned by Illyrian Marines and not by Illyrian Raiders, which makes them a way better assault unit, especially when uh, landing and assaulting on foot. So that's something that isn't correct uh, on the wiki or on the Steam store page. So with these units, the Adria have a nice diverse unit roster and gives them the opportunity to expand and make their mark. Let's move to the Adrician Kingdom. The varied peoples of Thrace have united under your banner and they look to you for leadership in an uncertain world. The belligerence of the Macedonians to the southeast threatens war. Should it come, your people must be prepared, so you must ready your forces. The warlike Tribali to the west pose a similar threat, and their aggression must be kept in check. To the south, Tillis is vulnerable. Their war with Macedon may make them useful allies, or it may distract attention if you decide to break your treaty and strike. Across the Danube River, the Gete may be your kin, but their ultimate ambitions are unknown. There may be profit and cooperation, but they must be watched carefully. It is time for your people to ascend as a great nation. 
for history to record the rise of the Odrysian kingdom. The Odrysian kingdom has the least raiding bonus, but it's still plus 100% income from raiding. While they have good ranged units with their deadly aim trait, which gives them plus 2 experience ranks on recruitment. They have a minus 20 diplomacy penalty to all Hellenic factions, which will make them hard to play right from the start. Choice wise I would say the Odrysian Kingdom has the least because with their diplomatic penalty with the Hellenic factions you will get declarations of war much easier than the other two factions. But if you play the diplomacy game right you will get more room to move and to raid. Play it wrong and you will spend most of your time defending your own territory. It's a wise choice to befriend Tillis right from the start so they can help you uh, with Macedon early on. Just keep in mind the longer you are friends with Tillis the harder it will become to break that bond later on. I found it handy and profitable to become friendly with one of the nomadic tribes to the northeast. So you have a steady trade route established and it will secure your northern border against invaders. This is especially true if you manage to become friendly with uh, Gatea. Although this can be a hard process. The way to expand seems to be to try and take the province of Thracia for yourself and expand from there. To help with this endeavor the new units for the Adrician kingdom besides the core units of the barbarian tribes are the Thracian horsemen which are fast moving spear armed medium cavalry. These units together with their highly trained range unit will break most enemy formations and help you deal with the strongly trained units of the Hellenic states. The Ardea and the Odrysian kingdom both have their own religious building change which brings new benefits and effects to their campaign gameplay while also having new technology trees which will allow them to unlock new units. These new technology replace their core barbaric culture technology trees. So with two factions covered we only have one faction left, which is the Thracian tribe of Tillis. Your people are of strong Celtic blood, but they are recent migrants to these lands and find themselves surrounded by strangers and enemies. To the west stand the Macedonians, an ambitious people whose aggression has led them to seek war with you. They covet your lands, but they will learn of your strength the hard way. To the north lies the Odrysian Kingdom. Beware their growing ambitions on land and at sea, but they may be useful as allies against Macedon for now. Across the Bosphorus, the Bithynians hold no love for you. If taken, their fortress city would connect your lands to those of the Galatians, fellow Celts who have settled in the east. Your people must fight to survive, but that has always been your way. From your new home, the riches of the civilized world are yours to raid and conquer. Well, Tillis has a medium boost to their raiding capabilities. They also get one experience rank for all recruited infantry. Uh, this applies to range units as well. Uh, but again, a public order penalty from the presence of the Balkan culture. This will put you into a position where you eventually have to deal with the Odrysian kingdom either by having a higher influence in religion or by conquering them and the second option being the best in my opinion. While war with the Odrysian kingdom is almost inevitable uh, they would make nice friends against your enemy Macedon. Combine this with a friendly Athens and Macedon has to fight on several fronts at once giving you the edge to raid and take their city in the province of Thracia. While expanding west is the most obvious choice, there's also gains for you in the east, where your phallic Celtic friends, the Galatians, are based. If you manage to take Bithynia by force, your lands will connect with the Galatians, and this gives you the opportunity to form a strong confederation. Of course, it will take some time uh, for your relation to build up. To help with this conquest, Tillis gains three new units, which are the Gallo-Thracian warriors, which are fast-moving, hard-hitting sword infantry, the tribal warriors, which are well-armored, medium swordmen, which are great in defense. And as last, they gain the raiding horsemen. They serve as a multi-rolled cavalry armed with javelin and sword. 
This will give Tillis access to a strong infantry army while having multi rolled cavalry. Just don't forget your navy, which you will need to raid and hold off enemy fleets. And with the three factions covered, there's just one thing you shouldn't forget. Uh, and that is that mercenaries will cost you 50% less. So if you need a quick boost of units, buy mercenaries. Just remember that their maintenance cost will be 50% higher. But you can disband them right after a fight, so you don't have to worry about their upkeep. And speaking of mercenaries, there are some new mercenary units as well which are the mercenary Thracian warriors, which are superior sword wielding melee infantry and they can be recruited in the province of Thracia. Then we got the mercenary Falxman, which is a melee infantry wielding the vicious curved blade Falx. They can be recruited in the province of Dacia. Mercenary Dacian skirmishers, which are excellent javelin armed skirmishers and of course they can also be recruited in Dacia. Then we have the mercenary Illyrian raiders, which are fast moving axe wielding stealth infantry and they can be recruited in Illyria. And then we have the raiding Amolia, which is a fast attack barge manned by mercenary Illyrian raiders. And of course this can be recruited in the province of Illyria. And then we have some new auxiliaries as well, which is the auxiliary Thracian warriors, uh, the auxiliary Falxmen, and the auxiliary Thracian skirmishers and the auxiliary Illyrian raiders. These new mercenary units are a nice addition to the already available mercenary units and will come in handy when playing one of the new factions. So the pros for me in this DLC is that these new factions have an interesting playstyle which forces, well at least me, to play differently than I did previously with the more traditional factions. And with the addition of more units and more mercenaries Armies will become more diverse, something that was lacking since Rome's launch. A call for me in this DLC is that the price of 7 euros 49 is too high. In my opinion it would be more acceptable at the price of 5 euros. Because this DLC doesn't add a whole new campaign, but just 3 new playable factions. On a side note though, it's good to see that the DLCs for Rome 2 have a fixed price point because all the culture packs are 7 euros 49, all campaign packs are 14 euros 99 and all small additions are 2 euros 49. All too pricey in my honest opinion, but it's at least good to see that all prices are fixed for each pack. So if you are interested in playing a raiding faction, this is the DLC for you. You can pick it up at 7 euros 49 or the regional equivalent and you will find the links down below in the description. So I hope this video was informative and helps you decide whether or not you want this DLC. I would like to hear your opinions and feedback on this video so I can improve and bring you better videos in the future. You can do this through the comments, Twitter or by sending me an email. All the details you will find down below. So thanks for watching, this is Mikorpa and I will see you next time.